everyone and welcome to Shalom Alekum. So today we are going to... Wait, see, I'm just so used to doing that every time. It's like I can't not... This will all be explained. Hello everyone and welcome to Shalom Aleichem. Today I wanted to tell you my 2016 mental health favorites. And since it is March, you can see this has been a long time coming. But I wanted to show you guys anyway because I found some really cool stuff last year. And you know, I'm still using that stuff today. So, let's get started. Oh wait, first, <laughs> I have an announcement. Not that serious. I wanted to tell you guys that I made a survey. Not just because I like doing surveys, but because I wanted to get your input on how well my channel is doing in regards to advocacy stuff, and I guess YouTube related stuff as well. The link to that will be in the description below, and if you want to go do that, if you haven't already, go ahead and do that. I actually made it in like January, I want to say, but I was telling myself, well, I won't take it down until I give you guys a chance to do it, those of you who aren't on Twitter and my other social medias where I've already posted it. So if you would like to go take that survey and help me out a little bit, I'd really appreciate it. Oh, and also, now that I've told you about it, the survey will stop being available one month after this day. So. I'll have that appear on the screen here because I don't know the date at the moment. Is it the 26th? Well, we should wait till the video is uploaded anyway. Let's get started. So today's 2016 mental health favorites. Um, first of all, I remember when I first started doing mental health favorites. It had just come out. Like Kristen had made her video about mental health favorites, and they were supposed to be like a monthly thing. But I was like, I will do these probably seasonally because there's just so many things I wanted to cover, and I was like, I don't think I can fit a video about my favorites in a month. Also, I don't really usually find new favorites in a month, but um, now we're doing it yearly. There are a lot of apps on the list this year, but probably the most exciting things were things that are physical, tangible items. So my favorite, favorite, favorite thing this year has been, or last year, that's sad. <laughs> My favorite physical thing this year has been Crazy Aaron's Thinking Putty. So the first thing that attracted me to Crazy Aaron's Thinking Putty was actually the name. I kind of thought it was being marketed as a coping skill. Because look, it's Crazy Aaron's Thinking Putty. I was like, well this is like, a, this is just a fidget toy. However, one day I heard the person um, at the cash register talking about this stuff. They just described it as like, the updated silly putty. And I'm like, you're calling this updated silly putty? This stuff is amazing. but it actually kind of is. It's just a toy. It's silly putty, but it never dries out. And that, I think, is the biggest gimmick of it all, to get, like, parents to buy it, because, you know, it's not gonna dry out when your kid leaves it out for, like, eight months. But there's actually a lot of really cool stuff involved with this. They have all kinds of thinking putty. There's glow in the dark. They have so many different colors, like fluorescent E colors, like neon -y colors, mixtures of colors. Right now, what I have is the magnetic version. It's it's freaking magnetic, silly putty. It's amazing. I love it. And I would really love to like sh put in like a picture of this close up. But look at this. Look at. The okay, now it's just falling. Oh, oh, uh, uh. yeah. It's amazing. I love it. It's freaking magnetic. <laughs> they also have like smelly kinds, and I have a smelly kind over here. Here's my rose smelling one. It's called. Love is in the air, and Aaron has a rose in his mouth. It's... It really does smell like rose. And after you use it, your hands smell like rose. It's awesome, I love it. In the smaller containers, it's not as satisfying, but it is much more affordable. This is only $3. So every kind of Crazy Aaron's Thinking Putty is kind of like in its own little theme. So there's like the glow in the dark and the magnetic, like I was telling you. Each theme will have different colors and different things like that. There's stuff that's like based off of, I think it's ores? Or something like that. There's stuff. I want to say there's some that's like literal iron or literal gold or something like that. Um, but remember, they're still toys. So, <laughs> um, but maybe it's just meant to look like it. I don't know. But it's a lot of fun. And maybe this is a stretch. But I think the name of this product says a little something about how we're going forward in this society with mental health. Because it really. I mean, think about it. The last product like this was called Silly Putty. Now it's called Crazy Aaron's Thinking Putty. This is obviously a, like a product for kids who want to or need to have something in their hands. This is something for people who want to think. This is, this is something for people who are trying to focus. I don't even know if I can describe it right now. It's more mind focus. It's not like children do things. It's like children and adults, we think. We have mental things going on up here. And I feel like just the name of this product, like I said, maybe it's a stretch, but I think the name really shows at how far we are going with mental health, especially mental health for children. Um, you could also say something about the word crazy as well, but I don't really know how to fit that into a positive light. <laughs> yeah, and it never dries out, guys. So if I were to forget to put this stuff away, 
you know, I'm a very forgetful person, <laughs> they would be great. I, nothing would happen to it. Oh, well, I might get dog hair in it. Look, that, that would be gross. The next thing I wanted to talk about is an app that I really love called the Nomi app. Now, I've been through many tracking apps throughout my day. Um, mostly mood tracking apps, let's be honest. Uh, but this one has to be my favorite. So, I was at a time where, like, I was using, I think... Okay, well, I think it was actually like two different trackers, but it annoyed me how there were some things that I wanted to track that couldn't fit into a mood tracker app. Like, they only had mood. My other app only had one subject. However, this Nomi app, you can track literally anything. And the creator of this app, I remember reading about him, he said he wanted to make an app where you could track everything at once. So this guy's coming from where I was, where I found his app. Honestly, dude's a genius. So the Nomi app is entirely customizable. You can make any tracker that you want for anything that you want. They also have a wide a wide array of different icons for you to use and they also have a lot of colors that you can choose from it's cute what I'm trying to say here you can make a nice little layout out of it um, it doesn't have to be cute like if you're a manly man it can be manly manly icons they have those too but mine are cute you can also apply points if you choose to things that you choose can either be good bad or neutral so if you're trying to break a habit say like biting your nails you can mark off every time you bit your nails during that day and you'll get a certain amount of points off depending on how many times you bit your nails that day if you're trying to cultivate a good habit like going to bed early on time you get a point up if you did that that day another thing you can use this for if you have OCD is to track your obsessions and compulsions I personally use it to track obsession blah, 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 to track compulsions and how many times I resist versus submitting to your compulsions and you might have heard me talk about a boss book in the past which is what I did in my um, intensive outpatient program for kids and adolescents we carried around a little book and had to mark down like when we committed and we had to mark down when we submitted resisted or re-exposed to a compulsion I also use it for tracking if I did an exposure that day because that's a habit I'm trying to cultivate in my life now this app is for Android however I don't know if they have it on iOS. I hope they do, because this is an amazing app, and I feel like it's very unconventional to have a tracking app that is perfectly, amazingly. One more thing is they have a really cute icon. Their icon's a cute little blue elephant. The next app I want to talk to you guys about is called Off Time, and in conjunction with that, another app called Clear Focus and Clear Lock. Off Time is an app that will block other apps. Um, well, it will block you, personally, from getting to those apps. If you're like me and you struggle with major distraction, then these, this, this was very helpful for me, personally. For me, honestly, I think off time was amazing, but I kind of like Clear Lock better. So Clear Focus and Clear Lock are two different apps. Clear Focus is a productivity timer. So I don't know if you've heard of the Pomodoro system. It's like the thing where you say you will work for 25 minutes and then take a break for five minutes and then work another 25 minutes, so on and so forth. So the Clear Focus is that, and you can set the timer for whatever you want. I love the design, very clean and minimalistic. And when used in conjunction with Clear Lock, Clear Lock will also block your apps during your work time. Honestly though, I can't complain about either of the apps. They both, or all three of the apps, but they both get the, do the job done. However, I do prefer off time for longer periods of time. If I had an app that, that blocked other apps that I could turn off, well, I just turn it off so I can watch those apps. However, off time, first of all, there's an extensive process you have to go, go through to turn it off. Second of all, my biggest problem wasn't that I wanted to use those apps as much as it was I just automatically could click. All I really needed to get over that habit was something to tell me, you can't go on that right now. And that's essentially what off time does. And clear lock. They both do the same thing, pretty much. Next thing I want to talk to you about, this is not an app. Yay! So last semester, I took a, a ceramics class and I actually found it very therapeutic to throw on the wheel. So if you guys have never taken ceramics or seen wheel throwing before or throwing pottery before, it's kind of, I mean, I don't, I'll probably overlay it with a video right now because I don't know how to exactly describe it. So throwing pottery is when you take a lump of clay and you throw it onto the spinny wheel thing and then you pump the wheel and you mold the clay into what you want it to be. So we made things like mugs, mostly on the wheel. And then we went on to do other things like sculpture, and that was really fun. But one thing I have over here to show you, because I don't have the wheel throwing things, although that was the most therapeutic thing in our class, I have this sculpture I made uh, based off of Malala Yufasai, if you know 
who she is. If not, you can Google her. This sculpture, I was very proud of it. I mean, yeah, it's a sculpture. <laughs> but I found especially wheel throwing very therapeutic because of just the whirring of the wheel, that noise, and the feeling of the clay working in your hands. Like, you're working your whole body. Also, I think ceramics was the most physically intensive art I've ever participated in. Not only were my arms sore after, but I, I got really hot and sweaty, and it was just like, it was a whole process, but it was a really fun class to take. I'm so glad I did that. And I would show you some of the things I threw on the wheel, but that was the first unit, and they didn't come out very good. <laughs> so, I actually also made a jewelry box made out of, made in the shape of how I usually draw my OCD. So, I'll probably overlay a video of that because I don't feel like going and grabbing it right now. But I think that came out really cute. I tried really hard with that. I even bought my own glaze. I was very proud. And speaking of pottery, that actually reminds me of something that has helped my mental health. So when I was in the intensive OCD program, we used to have art therapy. And part of that art therapy, our therapist taught us about this Japanese art called Kintsukori. Kintsukori. I, I'm sorry. Kintsukori. Kintsukoro. I do not know how to pronounce Japanese. I apologize that I'm totally butchering that. Basically, the word literally means to repair with gold. And it is the art of repairing pottery with gold or silver lacquer and understanding that the piece is more beautiful for having been broken. Now this was something that was taught to us in conjunction with doing an art project where we had to draw a Kintsukori bowl. And the message was that you can be beautiful even if you're broken. And it still inspires me to this day. It's more OCD wise. The message was also, I mean, it's art. It's however you take it. But um, more OCD wise, the message was kind of even something that is broken can be beautiful. Even something that is imperfect can be absolutely beautiful. How the Japanese people really embrace the imperfections to make an even more beautiful piece is just a beautiful concept. And when I was in the intensive outpatient program, I drew a bowl during that art session that got to go in the wall of fame in the, in the lobby. And I was very proud of myself that I got chosen to go put my painting in the lobby. I was very happy. So last year I found an app that I believe is just called the Kintsukori app. And that app is so relaxing. The music is calming, the visuals are calming, and it's actually a puzzle app. It's making a 3D Kintsukori puzzle. So if you don't want to do real ceramics or real Kintsukori, go ahead and get that app. Another thing is, I also found a ceramic app where you can make your own pottery. That was really fun too. The last thing I wanted to say was about coloring. Last year, coloring books adult coloring books became like a huge thing. Everyone wanted an adult coloring book. And I too participated in the adult coloring book trend. And if you somehow haven't heard of it, coloring is actually very helpful for mental health. It's something that can really like calm your mind just to focus you in one subject. Having something to do with your hands. There's a lot of aspects to coloring that can be very helpful and calming. I have two coloring books now actually because my grandma got me one for Christmas, which is super nice of her. I also have this one that's like a Christian coloring book because that's a thing that also came out. And if you wanted something of your own to color, I was really into Zentangling. And um, I actually don't know if I talked about this yet or not in a mental health favorites video, but Zentangling is a very fun thing. I really enjoy Zentangling. This was the first thing I Zentangled since getting this book that tells you basically different Zentangling techniques. And I didn't finish coloring it, but this is what it is. I find it really fun and calming and just, I think it's, it's really interesting to see the different designs people can come up with. And it's always pretty like fun to look at. And so if you wanted to make your own thing to color, that's kind of like what's in the coloring books nowadays, you can always look to this. I also don't think you need to be artistic to make one of these. Just fill space. That's really what it's about, making space and filling it. Anyway guys, thank you for watching. That has been my yearly mental health favorites. And if you have not already, go click on the survey in the description below and go do the mental health, the 2016 Shalom Aleichem survey. That's what it's called. I will talk to you guys later. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope to see you guys soon, like sooner between my last mental health favorites and this one. That would be great. All right, bye. Oh, and I did forget to describe what this was. In the background, I meant to say what this was. I'm actually making this for a photography project I'm doing right now, because I'm taking a photography class where I'm gonna showcase the different kinds of OCD and things al along those lines of living with obsessive compulsive disorder, and this is gonna be a little OCD, and it's gonna be cute but also scary, because OCD is scary. Grr. Alright. Oh. And I've also recently discovered pipe cleaners. We can call this a 2017 mental health favorite.